someone else. Yeah. yeah, get it in time. Get it in time. Very nice. Sorry, Teal'c. Uh, is it training server one? It is indeed. Okay, I want to feel like I'm surrounded by your man, love. I am indeed. All right. All right. So, real quick, guys. When we're all tapping out, you always hit escape before you do. Just to stop you from killing everybody, even if your weapon's down. So oh, I put my weapon on my back. Yeah. Why don't we all put our weapons yeah, on our back? You can do that if you want. Okay. So, welcome to the first meta course along here at UO. This course is going to cover. I'm going to turn that on, actually. Tiog, are you talking? Yes. Uh, he was muted for me. He's the going for teens speaking on mute. You know, Sam, what the fuck's doing? Yeah, he was muted. Okay. Tiog. I think he's fucking around with his mic. I can hear you, but I've got a cough. I want my money back. I can't hear Kyok. Yeah, I don't think he's talking right now. Yeah, I can't see his uh, thing flashing. Yeah, we am trying. I don't think he's talking. He's either having the issues or he's having. They still can't hear you. No. I I can hear. It must be an issue with Acre. I can't. I unmuted him, but I. Still can you hear? Can you hear T Hawk? No. No. Right. The, no. Some of them still can't hear you. That's weird. I can read now. Oh no, I'm here. Now I can hear you. And now he's muted again. Acre is just completely bugging out. He's not muted for me. Bloody Acre. Yeah, same here, but I can hear him. Yeah, but I don't see him speaking. So can you say something to Hulk? So yep. you test it. I can hear him now. Ah. Can Can you all, all hear him say yeah? Yeah. Hello. Yeah. 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 Hello. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. I don't know what happened there, but. Okay. So as I was saying, the uh, combat lifesaver. So the combat lifesaver is actually more of a um, American term. I've never really. Uh, heard it before outside of the US and in the Irish forces we just call it a uh, higher trained fucking soldier someone who's better at uh, first aid than anybody else um, essentially in real life what happens is everybody is trained up to a, a, a standard of first aid in a squad so everybody receives first aid training and that's normally the training with the, the improved first aid kit or the IFBAC which we'll go over later um, and then one person is picked out of every squad and is assigned as a CLS. Numbers. Let's pick that out of the platoon. CLS guys are given uh, extra medic support and a higher level of training. Um, in the Defense Forces, what we do is we pick the person who's the most proficient uh, out of the day. Uh, as in my medic, we'll go out to an infantry company, we'll train all of them up, and whoever are showing the most proficiency will take them and we'll train them a little bit higher in uh, medical stuff. In the US, I'm not sure how it works, but 
seeing as most of the stuff works in the US, they probably just throw a medical bag at somebody and say, you work, you're now CLS. Um, so anyway, so first thing we'll go over here is uh, in-game. Obviously, we don't have any dedicated CLS positions. Sometimes in a mission, you actually see one. But if you ever want to volunteer to CLS for your squad, um, then go ahead and do so. Uh, essentially, what your role will be will be to bridge the gap between buddy aid and field medic aid. So your job in the squad is to streamline the system after they've been fixed up by a buddy and uh, before the two medic gets there. You have extra knowledge on um, how to deal with Cajun's how to control them, all that, all that stuff. Um, the aims of it, which might end a little bit silly to say you guys here, but in reality, um, the aim of any type of first aid is to preserve life, to prevent further injury to casualty, and to promote recovery. And it actually kind of works a little bit in armor. You obviously you want to preserve people from dying, you want to prevent them from worsening, and you want to promote them getting back onto their feet and shooting people again. Um, the key to all first aid, most important rule of first aid, is very simply your own safety. So you never ever, as a rule of thumb, even in uh, civvy medical first aid, you never ever go into a situation without 100% knowing, or to the best of your ability, knowing that it is safe to do so. Because can anybody tell me what's when one guy bleeding out in the ground? Multiple guys bleeding out in the ground. Yeah, uh, two or in this situation, the highest trained person in the squad to deal with this situation also bleeding out in the ground. So that's the. Uh, that's why self resident is key when we're talking about first aid. Um, sometimes I think as an awful one, because obviously you're there to save people, but you're, you're there to make sure you're safer. Uh, so what we'll go over first is uh, the uh, medical equipment and the system that we have in place. And obviously because the name will go over all of the slight glitches and bullshit that comes with. Um, and I'll explain the system a little bit. Break it down as soon as we can. We'll go over the system. So obviously in um, in game we have uh, six pieces of equipment. That's the bandage, the morphine, epinephrine, medical kit, the bandage kit, elast, and the combat application tourniquet for the cat. Each one of these fill their own individual roles and are all used uh, slightly well not slightly different, some of these are same. Uh, so obviously first of all the bandage is used to stop bleeding. And uh, in our case, it's normally used to stop light and moderate bleeding. Uh, morphine is used um, when somebody is, pain, is in pain. As you all know, uh, pain has, uh, in the latest medical, ACE Medical, has actually become far more serious. Uh, pain, uh, any type of movement, followed by any type of equipment, will result in a quick and unconscious position of you. Uh, epinephrine is used for, uh, for someone who is uh, unconscious. Uh, although in reality, you would never ever, ever use epinephrine on somebody who's bleeding uh, profusely. Um, then we have a medical kit, which is essentially, uh, I'd like to pretend that it contains a splint and all of the stuff needed to uh, provide secondary care to somebody who uh, is coming in. Essentially, it's to get them back on their feet and they can get back out again. The bandage kit elastic is the one of the newest um, equipment we have in the game. It's essentially a bigger... Uh, bandage. In reality, a bandage kit elastic is a bandage with a built-in elastic system that can just go right around the leg and tie as, as hard as you can right onto the um, to the wound, rather than a bandage which might have to be done manually. Uh, it's used for much more serious bleeding, um, in our case heavier bleeding and catastrophic bleeding. And finally we have the comp application tourniquet, which from my experience seems to be the one that most people kind of don't really know what to use and just use it whenever they see the button there. The combat application tourniquet is used, as in real life, to stop catastrophic bleeding. Um, you apply it a few inches above the wound or at the closest um, pressure point um, to stem the bleeding and stop the bleeding, which allows movement of the casualty as well as further uh, bandaging and uh, tending the wound. The one thing about a combat application tourniquet, like in real life, is that they are incredibly painful. If anybody here has ever been through sort of uh, medical training where they apply, well, they'll, they'll say they put one on you, it is unbelievably painful. Mm -hmm. It tightens. And uh, this actually translates in games. The longer that you have the cat on, the more your pain increases until you pass out. Now, in reality, there is a danger to 
applying a combat gap application training when you don't need it or have enough too long, which means the leg will die because obviously blood isn't getting to it. But we don't have that problem in game. And the only thing we have is that people will just start randomly passing it. Uh, so are there any questions on the equipment or, or uh, anything at all? No, it's all pretty straightforward uh, so far anyway. Uh, the system itself, separate system, we have three things. We have the stabilized function, the CPR function, and the IFAC, which is part of the A system. Now, the stabilized system is one of the latest, uh, or stabilized, uh, is one of the uh, latest additions to the, to the A uh, medical uh, system, and it is, in my opinion, bollocks. Uh, it has this, be careful of it in game, it has this random chance to make people start bleeding. It, its only use is to essentially to resuscitate somebody for a short period of time so you can get some sort of information out of them and then they'll pass out again. And if you're running low on medical supplies, it might actually cause them to start bleeding again and you have to use a, a bleed bandage on them. Um, CPR is in select missions and use CPR on somebody who has a death timer. And using CPR will restart this um, this death timer. CPR used to have a 5% chance of completely resuscitating a, a person with no need for medical assistance. I'm not sure if this still makes I haven't seen it in a very, very long time. Um, the IFAC is something which changed. That's the individual first aid kit. And if you guys uh, check your person right now, underneath the on back symbol is three little symbols. And that is um, your IFAC right there. It used to contain a bandage and more an epinephrine. But uh, a standard infantryman does not have uh, epinephrine of their person or morphine on their person. Um, what this has, everything you need to save your life from being when you're bleeding, which is a bandage, a bandaged elastic, and a tourniquet. Um, and that's everything that a uh, basically trained first aid soldier will need to save himself. The most important thing about an IFAC is that it needs to be stocked at all times. Um, in the defense forces, it is actually an offense to be on barracks in uniform without your IFAC on. It's also an offense to not have your IFAC full. Um, and the main thing about the IFAC is that it is for you. And that's the reason why it needs to be full at all times. Because if I'm a medic and I run over to you and your IFAC isn't full, I have to end up using extra medical supplies, or with, which is okay in the sense that I have a bag full of them. But if your buddy has to use his bandage from his IFAC on you, that means that your buddy doesn't have a bandage which means some will have used their bandage on him, so on and so forth, until some person doesn't have a bandage, um, and that person will die. And that's why our fact needs to be constantly uh, full up and uh, always using it yourself. This part is obviously real fucking simple. It's just the equipment and the system of Ace Medical. Does anyone have any qu questions on Ace Medical system, any bugs they have they want answered, or any um, procedures that they, they uh, need to know with the medical system? Uh, yeah, can more. you go on, go on? Okay, uh, can you somehow fill up the uh, IFAC? Uh, yeah, when your when your IFAC is depleted, it'll say zero, zero, zero there. Next time you're at a uh, at a what's it called? A bomb medical box, or even with a medic, if you put a bandage into your your assist, your uh, inventory, it will go from where it is into the IFAC, and it will fill up the IFAC. So you, you can refill it and by putting more medic supplies into your person, it'll automatically do it for you. And, uh, sorry, I think it was that Nita had a question? Can you talk more about the CPR? Uh, CPR, well, I mean, uh, in-game, it's very, very limited. Uh, in-game, when you uh, approach body, who is on a mission where uh, we have uh, the respawn, uh, sorry, the revive function, um, a person and they die will go into a third person screen looking at their body and they'll have a countdown timer at the bottom of their screen counting down from 600, 1000, whatever, in seconds. Every time somebody uses EPR on you, that restarts your, your, your death timer. And that is to simulate uh, in real life where um, the main uh, for CPR is to basically stimulate the heart and get the blood flowing until somebody at a higher level can use obviously AEDs, which are defibs, to restart the heart. And just the other day, there was actually a report of somebody who uh, fell out of their car unconscious in the middle of the road. Uh, somebody came over, uh, trained in first aid, performed first uh, CPR on them for 15 minutes and saved their life because when the ambulance came, they were able to shock them. And because the blood had been flowing, they were 
alive, basically. And walked off, and no one, was, no one knows who he is. No one got his name, and no one knows where he went. So, walk back. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no worries. Uh, is there any other questions? Cool. Alright, so now we'll go on to the uh, normal system, which is, uh, or rather, the uh, strategies I use on this. So the first thing is self-aid or personal aid. So a lot of this you guys will remember from the book course. We'll go into a little bit more detail. We'll obviously have uh, questions about it and everything. Like that. Um, so first of all, self-aid is when you have been shot and you're been shot. Um, and you have, have to deal with your own medical situation, your own, your own uh, symptoms. And this is when your IFAC comes in, in handy. Um, so obviously, when you're shot, the procedure you go through here is the first thing to do is you have, you help. I'm hit. Um, and if you can, obviously in the heat of things you might forget, but it'd be better if you yell your name. Um, so, you know, the ox hit. That allows everyone around you to know, and more importantly, your buddy and your fire community to know that you've hit and there's a chance you might pass out in the next few minutes. Now, the next thing to do after this is to mag dump, essentially, towards the, uh, the place where you got shot. That's to immediately suppress anybody who's there who's shooting at you and to give you time to do, uh, to get to cover and concealment. So, or concealment rather. So after you're hit, you uh, scream man down, you put your uh, mag down range, and you move to either behind a bush or behind a wall or anything you can use to conceal or cover yourself from enemy fire. It's here that you perform one of two things. You either bandage yourself to stop your bleeding, or if you're catastrophically bleeding, you apply your cat to yourself, and uh, that essentially means that you are ready to... Uh, continue returning fire. The most important bit about self-aid with this new medical system is that when you have bandaged yourself or you have put the cat on yourself, you're going to be in extreme pain. Obviously, you've just been shot. Uh, you need to limit your movement as much as possible. Movement, uh, uh, essentially, I forgot the word right now, um, aggra uh, aggravates the pain and will cause you to go unconscious very, very short time. Right now, in my opinion, it's a little bit off. I don't, people go unconscious after like two seconds of running. Uh, so the best bet to do for you would be when you've bandaged yourself in a fire, let your fire team uh, and your buddy know that you have limited movement until the fire has, the, uh, has been won. After the contact has been won, if you have access to morphine, you can apply it to yourself. If not, you're gonna have to rely on your buddy to uh, maneuver you and if you, in case you fall, uh, pass out and establish any type of ability to peace. Um, so we'll move on to buddy aid here in a second, but uh, is there any questions on personal aid that anybody might be confused about? Uh, I've got a question if you don't mind. Yeah, shoot. In game, sometimes it says you can either use a bandage or the uh, the um, heavy duty bandage kit. Um, what's it called again? I can't remember. The, yeah, bandage kit elastic. Yeah, how do you know when to use the elastic? Because it gives you two options. You yeah. can either use both. Yeah, thanks actually for reminding me there. I meant to go over it in the system, but I forgot about it. So let's just simplify it as, as simple as possible. In game, all right, we have four methods of bleeding. We have light bleeding, uh, moderate bleeding, heavy bleeding, and a catastrophic bleeding. So if we sign each one of the points, let's just say light is two, moderate is four, heavy is six, and, uh, and catastrophic is eight. So what we do from here is, is you look at and the, or rather, and then we assign number to each band uh, that type. So let's say a bandage kit is four points. Sorry, a bandage, a normal bandage is four points, and a bandage kit elastic is um, twelve. So when you examine yourself, or as, as in when you go to check your uh, your bleeding, judging by the, the screen in front of you, it's very hard to judge yourself, obviously, because you're the one bleeding. You're sp it's supposed to simulate that you're in some sort of a hectic state you don't really know what's going on um, but when you're doing somebody else you'll get an examine function to let you know what type of bleeding is going on and that's when you can decide to use a bandage or a bandage kit so obviously if it's kind of light bleeding then a bandage will work it'll stop the bleeding instantly and you won't need to worry about it again if it's heavier bleeding you can use a bandage kit um, and uh, and stop the, the much heavier bleeding. obviously that's incredibly simplified there are situations where you also might need a bandage kit followed by a bandage because they need to add up to sort of heavier heavier uh, bleeding, like as in catastrophic would be, let's say, 14 points rather than, than uh, 12. But that's essentially it. That's the, in its most basic sense, is that if somebody is bleeding lightly, you don't need a bandage, heavier, you need a bandage kit elastic. 
Uh, if you're ever in doubt, just throw an elastic kit on them because that will stop all types of bleeding. Uh, just one more question on, along the same lines. Um, yeah, what's up, buddy? You using a tourniquet on yourself? Would you ever do that because you can't really judge how much pain you're in? And I'm guessing if you're in catastrophic bleeding, you probably pass out almost straight away. So would you use a tourniquet on yourself, or you, would you just keep it to when you look at the squad mate? You see, if you have the option for a tourniquet, it means that you're catastrophically bleeding. And there is, while you are definitely right uh, in the sense that, um, in the sense that if you're catastrophically bleeding, you most likely pass out very, very soon. There is always a chance that you will be able to get your cat on, and your cat will stop the bleed before somebody else out there. Um, I mean, in real life. You can you can put a cat on you uh, if uh, if you didn't know that it's it very simple. You just slide it on yourself and you just turn this handle until it tightens and the blood cell stops. And uh, that's what the design put on by with one hand, one uh, one limb. And um, but if you can put it on, do because it allows you uh, to maneuver quicker without having to put a bandage on. If you, if you know what I mean, um, it's very situational. If you're in a much safer environment. You can just apply a bandage, but if you're in a dangerous environment, if you're in contact, the best thing to do would slap that on, because uh, you don't have time to fumble around with bandages, if you know what I mean. Yeah, gotcha. Thanks. No worries. All right, is there any other questions? Hey there. Does the tourniquet ever need to come off? Yes, it does. Um, as I said, if the tourniquet stays on for too long, you'll continue getting pain until you'll pass out. Uh, eventually. You have to get. You have to obviously establish some sort of a safe position, and when you're at this safe position, you can stop your uh, your bleeding using the uh, interaction, and then after that, you can remove your tourniquet. And um, you will be marked with a T for everybody else when you have a tourniquet on, and that's how everyone else knows. And um, but yeah, uh, you will need to take it off eventually because you'll constantly pass it if you don't. Is that alright? Got it. Cool, cool. Alright, so move on to Buddy Aid now. Um, so Buddy Aid is something when I started uh, was not here. Two years ago was not really used at all. Uh, it was also very rare that Buddy teams were actually designated. But over the last two years, we've kind of been forcing, not forcing, but encouraging people to set Buddy teams out. Duke is trying to talk to you. Duke, I'm not hearing you at all. Maybe try um, reconnecting. Um, does anyone know what Duke could uh, anyone actually pass on Duke's question? Just to save them? Didn't ask what we say. He said, in my experience, and then stopped. Oh. Yeah, that's what T Hawk already covered that sometimes a wound can be so severe that it will require more bandages after an elastic or even a second elastic bandage. Yeah. Um, okay, so where was I, dude? So, as I said, buddy aid is something which is uh, quite new. I'm oh, sorry, uh, buddy teams is something which has been in kind of the last year, which we're trying to push. So, everyone here is essentially a note to you guys is when you're in the server, prompt your fire team leader to designate buddy teams. Very, very important. It streamlines everything from uh, maneuvering to uh, uh, firefights, contact to casualty uh, clearance, everything. Buddy teams are awesome for that. So, if you're going to take one thing away from this course, fucking take buddy teams away from this. Remind your fire teams. Your fire team leaders. So anyway, your buddy, buddy A is obviously between buddy teams, and it's essentially your line. Without your buddy, your... Um, the important thing it does is it puts cluster in and around a casualty. So one of the worst things you can have in game is somebody going down and everybody in the squad running over to him. You just have, you know, nine people within two meters ready to get killed. Very, very simple. Uh, so we designate buddy aid 
to get around some of these things. So obviously, to get around that, the buddy heals the buddy. That's how it works. Uh, in combat, you're constantly watching out for your buddy, um, and that's the same for it was a when it comes to uh, um, to medical. Uh, if your buddy said that he's been hit, you have the con you have the not only be aware of what you're doing, but also be aware of where he is at all times because he could have passed out. Um, you also have watching your buddy because if he passes out without saying anything, you obviously need to be there. So the procedures for dealing with another person being down is covered in the actual casualties, which I'll do next uh, in full. Um, but essentially, you always need to look out for your buddy, and you're the most important person to your buddy on, as, he, as he is to you when it comes to medical aid, because without him, you're not going to get healed up, you might get left in your mind. Um, so just before I go into action, is there any question at all uh, to do with that? This is Duke, can you hear me now, Duke? You're going to have to excuse me, if somebody's can, I, people turning on and off the radio seems to be just muting people uh, around. Duke's trying to talk again. Obviously, can't hear him. Yeah, no, I, I can't hear him. Please. Can you guys see my message inside? Chat? Yes. I can see it. Can Tiox see it? Yes, yes. Is your acre turned on? My acre isn't connected. I disabled acre. No idea then. <laughs> I just need to be there with T-Hawk. T-Hawk will probably just have to disconnect his egg, restart TeamSpeak, and then rejoin, which should oh unmute gosh. everyone. Alright, I'll do it. Keep asking questions in the meantime, guys. I'll do my best to answer once T-Hawk's rejoining. Alright, I'm back. And um, Duke, can you say something? Duke, I can hear you. Yep, Is I got Duke, you. Can you hear me? Oh, ah, yeah. cool. Sweet. Alright, shoot. What's up? Ah, uh, yeah. The only thing I will say, if if, if someone's suffering from extreme blood loss, sometimes you need to slap a cat on them, give him bandage elastic, and then give him two times uh, normal bandages. Then you can take the cat off and you're fine. You just have to keep doing it until it says he's not bleeding anymore. Oh yeah, definitely. As I said, I simplified the system, probably oversimplified it there. Um, the point values, I don't know. But essentially that's how the bandage and bandage kit work. It's that the bandage kit is worth more points than the bandage when it comes to bleeding. Um, and right now I'm only really aware of uh, light, moderate, heavy and catastrophic. But I think there are more levels of catastrophic bleeding. Um, such as like extreme hemorrhaging and stuff like that. Um, that might be put in. but. If anyone's ever tried to dissect Ace Medical, it's a mess. It's a fucking mess, so uh, I try and pull it as much as I can out of it, but yeah, no, very simple system there. Sometimes you're going to need a lot more, sometimes you're going to need less. Uh, just try and play it smart with medical supplies and yourself. Obviously, you know a bandage kit, elastic, is worth more than a bandage, so try and um, moderate, or uh, keep it in moderation how much you um, yeah, so before I move from Buddy Aid, is there any questions on uh, how to deal with uh, Buddy Aid or anything to do with buddies, the Buddy system at all? No? Alright, great. Alright, um, so actions on casualty is the main part of the CLS, uh, the CLS part. Um, and I think everyone's kind of got a overview review of this, a really, really quick one in the familiar course. If you haven't been to the familiar course, then this might be a bit new for you. Um, Essentially, in a firefight, if your buddy gets hit, uh, or if in, in, in uh, any case anybody gets hit, um, you immediately announce, announce man down and the name of the individual if you can, uh, and you scream that as loud as you can and to let everyone around you know, including the buddy and the fire team leader. Um, after that, you're, you, the first thing you do is you enact your actions uh, on contact, which is, as everybody knows, is listen to your fire team leader, he'll direct you what to do, pour fire down. Um, the next step is winning the firefight. So winning the firefight doesn't necessarily mean that you've killed the entire enemy. It means one of two things. It means that the enemy has been destroyed or the enemy is suppressed to, uh, to a point where you, it is actually safe for you to move, uh, relatively speaking, that is, to uh, the casualty to, to pull them back. Obviously, that's very situational. Um, now, in, in real life, 
um, you, you have to try and assess the casualty while you're looking at him. In armor, this actually does help in the sense that if somebody is dead and you look at them, it will not show their name. So if everybody, you know, obviously, if someone's your left, it will show their name screen. If somebody is dead and you're close enough, as you should be in a squad. If you're looking at them, you will not see a name. So that's how you know to yourself that that person's dead. Um, so uh, if you're in doubt, then keep going on. But if you know the person is 100% dead by looking at them and not seeing their name, then you don't move on. Um, obviously, be more careful with yourself then. Um, if the person is alive and you see their name, then you obviously have to get them. So to get them, there's, there's two ways. There's always two ways to do this. Um, well, but just just uh, you want to listen up. Don't worry. Um, so with your fire team leader's permission, of course, not but not your own initiative. Um, you need to move out to the uh, to the uh, the castle. Um, so to do this, you need to coordinate your fire team and squad's fire while you move to suppress you, or if necessary, pop smoke. To conceal uh, the squad and drag him back and drag the casualty back. Um, uh, there, there is one thing that you should be doing before you dragging that person back, uh, and this is probably situational. It either is or it isn't. If you get to the person, that person is catastrophically bleeding and has been there for for a while. You will need to put a cat on him, ASAP, before me. And that's because the person's been for so long, they're right there, that during the drag, you, they could die. You've known how long you've dragged before, you've no idea what's going on. Um, so if you get to the person... I'll see what he's going to do when I have a look. Sorry, Jack. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Um, oh, sorry, I thought you said something. Uh, I'm actually out of game, by the moment. If, you, if you, there's something needs, someone needs to let me know. Just no, we're we'll talking about in. Steve because he's literally running off and shooting somewhere yeah. over there. Uh, Steve, is there something wrong? Is he in team he doesn't have... No, he's he's in TeamSpeak. Oh, yeah. He's in TeamSpeak as Steve-O. Steve, how you doing? Alright, kick him. Carry on, team -all. Yep, just like the channel. Um, Alright, so, when you get to the casualty, um, you're going to have to perform something which is very quick, uh, a very, very basic form of triage, um, which is essentially, is this person catastrophically bleeding and might not make the pull, or is he uh, at a enough state where you will be able to drag him for a few you know, seconds, minutes, um, and then you can bandage him. If he is in an unsafe location, and needs to be bandaged, as in the option for a cat has come up, he needs to be moved, apply the cat. It takes a very, very short amount of time, and it will save his life, it will stop him bleeding. Um, if he's in a, a safe location, as in, let's say he's been shot in uh, next to a wall, he's fallen back behind the wall, and getting to him is actually relatively rather easy, you're not under any type of uh, strain, then of course you can apply a bandage to him there and then on the spot, and then drag him into cover. But usually a person will fall in an unsafe location. So if you get to that person and you've assessed that he needs a cat because he is so uh, bleeding so heavily, then apply that cat. After this, we obviously move him to cover to perform our actual life-saving uh, um, procedure. So to do this, we have a few, few options. We can drag the person, we can carry the person, we can load him onto a stretcher, or we can pull him with a vehicle and pull him out. Um, so the drag is one of the easiest things. It's a very, very, very quick animation, but it can only be used when somebody is unconscious. It allows you to still fire your weapon, albeit at an incredibly inaccurate um, way, but with experience and uh, tr uh, practice practice, you'll actually roughly learn to know where those bullets are going to land and can use it to suppress. Um, the other one is carry function. Uh, the carry function can be done from dragging somebody using your scroll wheel. It can also be done by uh, examining them and helping that person to walk. It's an option they have to accept. Uh, the downside to this is that it is a much longer animation, but it allows you to see where you're going and move slightly faster. You can, once again, still fire a weapon, but it's still rather inaccurate. Um, the stretcher can be used if, for instance, the CLS is not the... So you are acting as the CLS for the squad, the buddy is helping his mate, and you can go down there and assist with him as in a two-man team, and you can pull him out with a stretcher. The only problem with the stretcher is that person 
um, can be conscious enough to get onto the stretcher. It can also be loaded onto the stretcher if he's unconscious. It's just it's a slightly longer process because you have to like 